Tried to do it the right way. Should somebody come save us? Black Lightning's back. Come to shock the hate. So since Black Lightning just ended and aired its series finale, and to celebrate that, I wanted to rank all 58 episodes of the show. This isn't a show that I would have been interested in when it first was promoted and whatnot. It was okay, this is like another superhero show that may or may not be a part of the Arrowverse, but I'm glad I stuck around through it for four seasons because it is the most consistent show out of the Arrowverse. There's not a single bad episode, which makes this ranking a lot more harder because it took me a while to actually rank them on paper. I was like, okay, how should I rank these and whatnot? And so every ranking on this list, are just kind of edged out by what I prefer and like so all of these episodes are good there's not a single bad episode at least to me number 58 the book of ruin chapter 1 picking up the pieces from season 4 episode 5 now this episode is last not because it's still a good episode but it does feel a bit clunky and messy not because of the end where new gen comes out the actor was recast there's like a new face to gen that's the least of my issues with this episode it's everything else like Lynn and Jefferson start fighting again even though the previous episode in episode 4 they resolve that they make up they will try to fix their marriage it's a very complicated situation they're not even like remarried yet but they're like living together and it felt like because Jen was missing and now she's like some sort of particles or whatnot the writers they needed to find an excuse to be like hey let's have them fight again even though in the last episode they just resolved everything it felt weird it felt messy and it's as if there was no communication in terms of the writers would be like well what about that forget it just redo that okay and it is a very talkative episode which isn't an issue but it was just all right it was fine and Nessa talking to TC about letting her go up in the sky that was all okay i think anissa and gracie have a fight i think yeah i think they have a fight as well and it's like why there's no reason aside from i guess because jen's missing and trying to find particles and other particles that get jen back it's just again very clunky and messy and i believe this is the episode where jefferson goes up into the sky and gets particles or materials and the cg doesn't look that great it looks a bit like a mess it wasn't done it wasn't rendered throughout and in this episode you definitely felt the budget being really stretched it didn't look too good the previous episode's budget was fine but this episode specifically there's a reason why they're all sitting and talking and even with that them seeing the budget going up in the sky didn't look too great so just really stretching that budget but still good episode 57 black jesus book of crucifixion now this episode felt like a time waster or more like a bottle episode where this episode to me ruined season one's momentum leading into the penultimate and finale where stuff were happening but then also not jefferson being arrested that's fine and the henderson the only thing i like was henderson just kind of being like you know tell me your secret by this point he doesn't know about jefferson's secret yet and he doesn't want to reveal that so he's in jail for most of the episode while Henderson finds out about corrupted police throughout Freeland that one guy K-Man I think is his name that guy he's always been corrupted always eyeing Jefferson the wrong way and finally Henderson gets him out and then because of Henderson getting rid of that one there's not only one corrupted cop but there's probably like multiple but that was probably done off screen he is now the chief and head of the police on Freeland so we get more of Henderson's skills didn't really see that he was just that one cop guy that always got in Jefferson's way whenever he was black lightning but in this episode he's helping him behind the scenes behind the bar how things really work in the police station corrupt it is and i guess to bring everything back all around they bring back the whole lala kidnapping his daughters back because henderson doesn't really quite know why he's behind bars mainly because kara the vice principal called on jefferson to get arrested because she is with the shadow board which is a big shocker i remember watching the live being like wait a minute she's one of them but she called a hit on that and do things behind the scene and this is the episode and the first mention of the pods with those kids 30 years ago that are still somewhat alive and still kept around the very corrupt shady things that were happening in Freeland and that will carry on throughout the next two seasons because I didn't realize how big of a plot for the podcast that was for you know this season two and the season three as well. Henderson being chief, Jeff gets out and then the whole family just celebrates by the end of the episode. Number 56, The Book of Blood, Chapter 1, Requiem. Now this is the start of the Looker arc and it starts with Gamby being killed off and over by this other car and it's like okay hold on Gamby the actor this guy is a serious regular he ain't gonna be killed off on screen like this he's gonna die in some I don't know way of saving the Pierce family so that was not believable at all come on what's the end game of this other than just hiding you know and it also starts with the whole anissa being in the hospital working for the hospital how she gets her income but also meets anaya i think it's her name anaya this pregnant lady from south Freeland because anissa will go there and help this family giving birth to twins and her boyfriend who's very skeptic and very so much shady he's like very giddy kind of like a drug addict but trying to get away from looker and her abilities and we see that tease near the very end of the episode and wants to get a tease to grace's skin abilities aka her shape-shifting ability 
abilities and while going or self reeling was a cool idea i think like this looker r2 or three parter r felt very detached from normal reeling and it's the reason why it's in self reeling very just kind of disconnected and detached what was in this episode was good but it's also like disconnected and i don't really like that even still rewatching it i was like yeah this is nah i don't know i'm not really feeling it the looker character is cool seeing that really scary tease near the end but i don't know i just wasn't feeling it on rewatch i thought i would but again wasn't bad it just felt like a weird placement for the season to be near the beginning and then you're kind of like the middle part i guess the first half and i didn't mind it but it was definitely like mm, i don't know weird to place it here and dr jace is not to be trusted because she just double crosses lynn during their experiments because it's dr jace she's really shady no one should trust her and that's what's great about her she's just goddamn snake biting everything and everyone around her number 55 the book of rebellion chapter 2 the gift of the magi from season 2 episode 9 i wasn't really too keen on this whole running away arc from Khalil and jen like they're riding in a car i guess in his car riding off and it's like i'm not really a big fan of this and the whole relationship thing i'm not a big fan of that as well so with them hiding in the barn for the whole time and then gamby and the rest of the family looking for them and this is the second episode that they've done this and it's a bit like man i don't again i don't mind this it's still a good episode but it's like i don't know about this one and then painkiller he's hurt and out because of cutter in the previous episode she just cuts him then lynn reaching out to khalil's father wow that was a very nice and touching moment again it didn't i didn't feel anything about it it was just like okay this is progressing this kind of arc in the middle of the season that i'm not really too fond of and then while jen is stealing at the hospital and using her abilities to do illegal things but also to her advantage cutter is right behind them and then cutter herself is a really cool character i like her abilities and i like her costume look everything about her i just wish she would have stuck around after the end of season two but i guess for story reasons it doesn't make any sense for her to come back at all it made sense but i was like i do miss this character i wish she would have come back to why contacts a boy named todd green who's been really just not new to his abilities and advantage she's just very high-tech person like gambi and tobias uses his oblivious to what's actually going on to his advantage so that he could just use Todd kid because he doesn't really know what's going on he's been neglected by everything and everyone around him the schools probably his parents so that's why tobias takes him in to use him and just play with them like puppet and then jen somehow knocks out cutter which again progressing her abilities that she doesn't want but then she has to realize you need to use your power your abilities they are very much powerful but she doesn't want to so has that conflicting like she doesn't want to but she has to she feels forced to and we get the tease to the teleporting meta who seems really op number 54 the book of rebellion chapter 1 exodus like i said in the previous entry this is the start of the runaway arc me pink Killer's mom and aunt and his whole family and this house out of nowhere and then speaking of his mom tobias goes to his mom's house and it's a really cool scene this mom's like a badass like a tiger mom protecting her son even though she doesn't know what he's doing and how much trouble he's in she's willing to protect her own son because it's family and tobias doesn't decide to kill her because he has this thing for you know what no person shouldn't live without his mother which i like about tobias he has this like he's a villain he's a bad person but he still has a certain code about some certain things like killing fathers because his father was a piece of crap but moms and mothers on the other hand keep them alive because you know no person should live without at least a mother according to tobias which makes him great and then you got gambi and the pierce family like, looking for jen these are one poor jen cost him saying that she's fine she's all right but clearly she's not the assassin that tobias called cutter she's gonna come in and cut khalil and whenever they all arrive including cutter and the pierce or not pierce but black lightning and thunder they have a decent fight within painkiller's aunt's house but then both jen and khalil they like sneak out and it's like they're prolonging this for i don't know for some payoff which will pay off and it's a really cool payoff but that journey of getting there to me is a bit boring kind of meandering like okay they're gonna do this for like i guess a couple of episodes and then cutter calls tobias being like black lightning showed up again for another pierce person this is the episode where tobias puts two and two together and that doesn't pay off until the next season which i do like prolonging that having plans for the next season and so it seems like the showrunner and everyone involved seems to know what they're doing and plotting things out because this is what it would be pay off later on number 53 the book of consequences chapter 4 translucent free from season 2 episode 4 this episode are the therapy sessions with jen with Karina, and seeing visions of painkiller killing and just khalil in general killing and doing very bad things while also at the same time being considered like a freak by her parents because she needs these additional helps because of her powers and she feels she's being like a little kid being like hey this is how you do this and this and she doesn't like that very much but because of these visions she gets worried within her own powers and khalil himself and does consider herself like a freak she doesn't want to be 
this known lightning freak and that's how she kind of sees it the episode also serves as a way for Renessa to just kind of move out and do her own thing because she has an argument with Jefferson on how to do things not being humble she's like applauding and bowing down to like the people of Freeland and she's not being very humble which bothers Jefferson because she can you know lose it at any time celebrate it and then someone just comes out and knock her out kind of out of left field the new principal Laurie as well he's just he's not a bad character he's just not a character that I want to see on screen and so he's portrayed as this bad teacher with these set rules that make sense but because it's Freeland and Freeland as a community very tied to Jefferson the previous principal and all that stuff it's a very tight-knit community Laurie just comes in and be like this is how it should be that's it with that mentality there's issues with all the students he like suspends I think two kids were fighting even though nothing really bad happened they were starting to fight but Jefferson handled it and then Laurie just comes in and be like hey yeah you're expelled and you're suspended it's kind of a bad principal Laura also dies from that one cool sick harpoon from Tobias with giving a one number two Gamby as kind of like a last resort take down Tobias and Tobias also gets out of jail which kind of undoes everything that happened near the end of the previous episode where he was arrested this episode did have nothing happen half of it but progressing Jen's power seeing Khalil the principal of school stuff that was all right I didn't really mind that it was just like okay another thing number 52 the book of consequences chapter 3 master Laurie from season 2 episode 3 like I said in the previous entry Tobias being arrested by the end was a big shocker because it was like wait a minute is this already over him being caught and it was all a part of the plan but it was also like I don't know you could have done something else it felt like a big time waster I was like, okay I was along for the ride and then principal Laurie being amazing just principal putting metal detectors treating it this school like a prison which some people may feel that is school and the school system in general feels like a prison system which probably is but him implementing all these makes sense from his point of view again I don't mind this character it's just a character that I'm like really want to see this character on screen but I guess he's there for that purpose because Jefferson is out as principal he still has a job at the school but he has to resign from principal because of his absence during Tobias and Khalil invasion and cyanide near the end of season one Gamby also decides to help the sisters because he's just a very nice person they call him uncle Gamby which is a nice touch because he is their uncle kind of Gamby did raise Jefferson to teach him how to be black lightning build the suit and whatnot so he's helping them building better suits for them a more stable suit for thunder and a new suit for Jen because she doesn't have one yet and because cyanide did get killed by Kara Pinko is kind of the only family that Tobias has so he treats him like family in a way that he grew up I don't know what scene from which episode it is but I remember one scene of them playing chess and then Pinko is all cocky and whatnot but then once Tobias takes over and wins the chess game he just beats the shit out of him it was both hilarious and scary at the same time Pinko does not like this he won't get out of this immediately which he does later on number 51 book of blood chapter 3 the sand from season 2 episode 7 it's at the end of the looker arc and it did get weird in the end with the whole baby stuff baby twin stuff and how she's so fixated on this family wanted this baby to be i guess her successor in a way i don't know it felt weird both Khalil and jen start the runaway arc Khalil wanting to run away from his family which is not tobias because he's treating him like crap and for jen it's her whole family thing her powers because she sees that also as crap as well and jen does reveal her powers to Khalil for the very first First time and I guess the reason why they both run off is the implication that they're both freaks Kilo isn't what he used to be no more Jin doesn't want her powers and that's why they run off I guess thinking about it right now that makes sense for them to start their runaway but I don't know still not too keen on that both Thunder and Black Lenny make Looker bleed and her control all over South Berlin has been broken and they eventually hand her off to the ASA which will be a huge mistake on their part because they don't know Agent Odell just yet Lin does Lin's met him before in the very beginning Tobias starts a call with Cutter and Jefferson does find Gambit in a hotel still alive because he's not dead that ain't tricking nobody and this also shows much of a badass survivalist Gamby is as old as he looks and is he survived that crash and everything he's a marksman expert shooting and killing people like he's a badass which for a guy past his prime and looks like he is he's still very much a badass for his age number 50 book of reunification chapter 1 revelation this episode picked up right after this cliffhanger where everyone lost their powers because of the emitter and everything but then turned out to be fine so that kind of really doesn't do much for the end of episode 9 the previous episode black lanny has this fight with ishmael cool he had a retreat which sucked because i was like god damn it tune this fight he has no powers but come on fight this character he's a bad he's trying to kill metas 100 metas so he can join the league of assassins everybody finds out that no meta powers are working aside from whatever bias is using and red and val as well and both of their abilities are enhanced red being magneto s powers and val dampening powers which is why the emitter works so well because she's dampening every other meta's powers and then link gets arrested because of tobias 
shenanigans and trying to ruin the Pierce family. But I believe this is a scene where she gets stripped naked and it's it was a bit much. I get what they're trying to go for, but it's also like why? Especially near the end of the series. That did feel a bit too much for me. Feel indifferent about that scene, that whole thing. But Anissa calls Keith Michaels, who's an ex-boyfriend of Lynn. And I thought this character was introduced because both Lynn and Jeff were gonna get their happy ending. Because by this point I was thinking, okay, they're gonna get rid of Tobias, but in doing so, Jefferson's not gonna get back with Lynn, his happy ending with his ex-wife because it is too much for both of them to handle with him being a hero and being his happy family man because she didn't want that in the very beginning of the series but that never panned out i just kind of overthought that dc finds out that tobias has a payroll to a bunch of other people that may have to do with the corrupted side of freeland that's when pink killer decides to help because this last chunk of episode is going to be him and biting a bunch of other metas and then lowering the trust of gambi and then tobias wants to be back on top of the shadow board which he tried doing that in the first couple of seasons and that didn't really work out too well so season four felt like a rushed season and they just kind of had a rush just be like oh guess what he has all the power feeling he wants to go to central city darling city but he also wants to be a part of the shadow board which i don't know i don't know why he would do that when he already has everything he just wants more number 49 book of blood chapter 2 the petty the pretty the pretty from season 2 episode 6 gammy is alive in this episode they just kind of reveal that being like yep he did not die in that car crash because of course not lynn has to tell the sad news about not being able to save the 13 or 14 kids that was killed by jace because they need to save i guess equipment i don't actually don't remember but she was trying to save these kids and both jace and odell didn't really want that however she did go with that kind of experiment but in the end dr jace just kind of betrayed her and be like you know what screw them just kill them all they're not gonna be saved they also also get a good look into the ayana family and look herself controlling the whole side of south Island. hearing about black lightning her interactions with black lightning was cool because it was like she's heard about you but she also doesn't want to kill you just yet but she will eventually but that also doesn't help he gets out immediately and then painkiller doesn't really follow tobias's order order to kill the church guy i forgot his name the priest guy but he doesn't want to and he rebels and it will be the start of the rebellion from painkiller to tobias and then the whole giving birth to twins thing like again this felt so disconnected to the point where it's like it didn't feel important it felt kind of like filler but it's not filler really because tobias and killer are still in the episodes so i don't know it's a weird thing which is i've never been too fond of this looker book of blood art because it felt so just on its own separate thing from another show which is the whole point of it but i don't know still not fond of it but the twins the birth she needs one for again successor thing or child thing i already forgot completely forgot about it but it is weird number 48 book of secrets chapter 2 just and unjust from season 2 episode 12 the markovians start their attack on the esa and freeland as well where they shoot anissa and then they start terrorizing other parts and pockets of freeland and odell is just kind of there being like i warned you guys you guys weren't listening while the pierce were dealing with tobias and everything esa and markovians while on screen were doing behind the scenes stuff and odell still doesn't trust lynn because she's telling a bunch of lies which she is just to protect her family and because of this he like watches over them near the painkiller slash khalil funeral slash shrine and he's legit watching them on monitor there's like a khalil shrine at school and of course your favorite principal lari just comes in and be like you don't want that in the halls that's distracting and lynn stands at her ground a majority of the season she's been away from school so that she can control her powers and now that she's back it's like a new principal new rules and she doesn't care about that Garfer high school it is a community of people come together working together and this principal doesn't get that and gets suspended for it and again great principal and and everyone goes to the Julio funeral which Odell is there gives the idea to dig him up and take him put him in one of the pods because you know he's not staying dead again one of those Gambia ones being like oh man he's dead I'm sad but it's also like god damn it kind of undoes that when he's back in the pod all alive and because of Dr. Jace being with Tobias he now has an army full of metas now and these other pods that were there 30 some odd years ago so he's also gaining control and power as well while ASA and Secret Service Markovians are dealing with everything else at the same time number 47 Book of Ruin chapter 2 Theesis ship I think that's how you pronounce it Theesis I probably pronounced that wrong but from season 4 episode 6 this episode prolongs and progresses the whole arc of Tobias wanting to be mayor his rise to power but also adjusting to the new look of Jen I hope this actress didn't get hate on Twitter I mean she probably did but this was not an easy choice because again China wanted to take a break from acting so it was like you know they had to work around things and this is the best solution that they came up with and I do feel that I guess most people won't like season 4 because of this because she is like a fan favorite 
and while I get that, they couldn't really do anything about it. They were stuck in this situation being like, well, we gotta do this somehow. You know, the show must go on. They had to do what they had to do. But this new actress in this episode does well, and later on as well, she does a good job of capturing the original Jen presence, having that sister bond once she comes back. I do find it kind of messed up that Jeff doesn't find it adjustable at all. He like kind of backs up being like, that ain't my daughter. It's, it's kind of messed up, honestly. When I first watched it, and even now, I was like, damn, that's cold, man. That's still your daughter. She just looks different. And because of the new look, they have to come up with family aliases for Jen, so now she's called JJ, the niece of family. And Tobias and Val, they find out about that as well. And Ishmael gets introduced in this episode with fighting Lala because of Destiny. And they pour cement into Lala to the rest of the series because he can't be killed. And I won't lie, when Ishmael first shows up on screen, his costume doesn't look the best. It looks a bit amateur-esque. Not the biggest fan of costume, but his abilities and his fighting, everything about him is cool. And because there's no new suit to fit the new Jen, Gamma creates just essentially a Blackbird copy for Jen, just like Anissa. And it has like a hoodie and everything. It looks cool. And that gets Grace is there as well, just to be the opposite of being like change of skin. Number 46, Book of Resurrection, Chapter 1, Crossroads, from Season 4, Episode 12. The penultimate episode, I guess, was most definitely rushed because one of the Shadowboard, they get killed off by Tobias by an invisible meta. And now he's in one of the seats, the Shadowboard will all bow down to him. And again, it's like, why go after that? You know, you could be doing your own thing. You could be killing all of them. They're sure the Shadowboards, who cares? I guess that's one of the aspects of Shadowboard. It's always been there, but never brought up up until now. Brought up in season one, I guess kind of in season two, but really not in season three. It was with the whole US president stuff and ASA. Season four, they just kind of brought it up being like, they're still here. It's like, I don't know. I don't really care about them. They give a reason as to why Lopez hates Meta so much. Husband got turned into some sort of Meta and killed her whole family. Because until now, she was just kind of like this cop that worked for Tobias. It's the reason. It's not for money. I guess they needed to give a reason. Her character was just kind of an average. And she's still average. She still served her purpose having this vendetta and fixated on lightning. But it's like, okay, just give a reason. And they did. Good reason, which is fine. It was recorded and take down lightning. With Jen setting up her social media stuff, everybody's kind of laughing at her, mocking her. And so she takes a shot. She gets Meta powers. Again, feel rush out of all the things. Lopez just kind of feels like this thing that's like, well, we'll just bring her up every now and then. Give her a reason quickly. There's a hacking bit or team between Lynn, Laurel, and Gamby. They're all hacking stuff. We get a painkiller in Ishmael, which has been built up in the last episode. I did want the fight to last a bit longer. Damn it, I wish it would have lasted longer, but poison him to death. And then Shakur takes in Looker. And then the pre standoff. I guess it's the fight, but it's not really because Jefferson has no powers. And they use that trope to make the villain feel more powerful. Take away the hero's power where Jefferson dies, calls Jin, Jin screams, drops a cup, and says, like, Yeah, he's totally dead. Jefferson's totally dead by the end. Number 45, Book of Reunification, Chapter 2, Trial and Errors, from Season 4, Episode 11. The emitters that are created by Lauren and Gamby all comes back, because I was wondering the whole season, what is the whole point of these scenes with Gamby and his ex-wife, other than, you know, sleeping with each other and whatnot, and rekindling their marriage, I guess. For Tobias is still it, and the DEG guns and whatnot, hurting humans, both humans and metas as well, that comes back all around, so it made sense. It was just, I guess Gamby and his arc, they were just kind of playing the long game with it, and I wasn't really along for that journey at all. Jefferson does reveal to Jakor his true identity, which is the same, you know, reaction from Henderson, because he is the protege of him. It's like, yep, yeah, this should have happened earlier, but hey, you know what? Felt kind of rushed, but that'll work together. Looker is found out to be in with Tobias on payroll and is the highest paid. Painkiller goes to her. They have this amazing fight with Painkiller and Khalil fighting Looker within her own mind because her liquid substance goes inside them, and they have this really cool fight and everything. It was awesome. Better than the Ishmael because there's two of them, I guess three of them, and then Looker agrees to confess the truth, and Tobias now knows this calls Ishmael to get on painkiller. Lynn also creates a serum for Looker and her abilities pretty damn quickly. Really rushed thing. And then the boy that Jen goes out on a date for Uriel? Uriel? Something like that? He could kill by red because, you know, Jen needs some sort of motivation. Again, she's trying to, you know, venture out do some other things, but it's like, I don't care about this boy at all. She, like, stood up with him because he was also defending Jefferson when he was getting out of, like, embezzlement or something like that at the school and they're questioning his morality. Big luck into him. Number 44, The Book of Reconstruction. Chapter 1, Collapse or damage from season 4 episode 1. Now I'll be honest, I don't remember how season 4 started with its premiere. I think it started with Henderson's grave seeing Alvin, his dead father, and also recklessly using his powers up in public. Now that was a cool little entry and plot thread for like 5 episodes because he didn't have the suit on. He didn't wear the suit, which I did like. I was wondering how much are they gonna like not put the suit on because they're gonna stretch his budget really far and added a bit more tension to whenever he was out because he didn't care. Suffering the loss of Henderson affected him in a way where he just has depression 
now and it's affecting everyone around him his kids are going out doing things that he's doing but because they're not veterans and they haven't done it for a long time they're messing things up he needs their help but he's not helping them and then this major lynn isn't really working out they're having big arguments there was also like a one year time pass which would mean that there would be no crossing over with other shows and even if they did this is around covid time so they wouldn't even have a crossover tobias is starting his rise to power until the very end anissa grace and jen are going out doing things and being heroes but one kid gets shot by a bunch of shooters because of the war between destiny and her cartel gang and the 100 gang with lala leading it killing a bunch of people and it's like people that are standby with jerson learning this news he like goes and cripples a man without the suit again adding more is somebody gonna find out that he's actually you know black lightning they never did but that was the whole point of it number 43 the book of secrets chapter 3 pillar of fire from season 2 episode 13 the markovians are not just only making metas now they want both dr jace and especially lynn for her expertise and experimenting because they're both very skilled at that while at the same time they're almost stabilizing the pods and helping the kids i guess kind of get up and live normal lives but knowing odell asa and markovians they're gonna use them for weapons and tobias as well because he like awakens with this one guy from 30 years ago called shakedown i think is his name yeah i'm gonna say it's shakedown i might be wrong on that but he wakes him takes control of him control a full meta army just like the markovians and asa and this also finds out that grace is a fake alias and id for grace Choi. grace is never a real person whoever she's been hanging around with and wanting a relationship with this person this girl grace Choi isn't a real person at all she's gonna hide that away from anissa eventually at some point they're both gonna tell each other we're both metas jennifer also then wants to track down tobias for the death of khalil is a catalyst for embracing her power and then tobias also decides that todd green has outused his usefulness and decides to kill him in a car accident and crash which sucked because again this kid was super oblivious to everything thought he was doing good in the world but instead not realizing that he was helping this criminal this villain and then in the end he doesn't even know about it he just gets killed off number 42 book of secrets chapter 4 original sin from season 2 episode 14 lala is back and alive again so it's also by this point where i realized yeah lala is just gonna be that character who's gonna stick around literally like the last laugh of the series and this episode as a whole mostly is lala at the school with jefferson talking about his friend earl and who killed him turns out it was him it felt like a bottled episode it felt like a waste of time episode where they needed to fill in time this episode felt like that lala like shoots him and he gets his bullet out and everything and it's like so what's the point of this aside from amazing stuff from lala his cousin and then lawanda hearing both sides of to kill or not kill jefferson and i guess it's a good showcase of like the mental health and case of lala all the tattoos and whatnot on his body and skin odo also decides just to take over the test because lynn is doing some mostly not shady stuff but she's taking forever he's like you know screw it he doesn't trust her he'll take over and then it is also the beginning of him watching over the pierce family creepy but also in plans of what's gonna happen next season and then anissa decides to visit grace and she turns into this man because again that fear of being rejected by what she is and what she looks like even though they're both again same at us they just need to tell each other hey we're a bit different we can still be together but yeah this episode mostly is just kind of like a bottle episode high school scenes with jefferson and lala and him wanting vengeance to get so biased because he is the cause of this for some reason i forgot everything about what happened this season and last season so it's weird for a time waster but still good number 41 the book of ruin chapter 4 lighting lighting something like that from season 4 episode 9 gammy builds a new suit for anissa that suit looks good as well but then it would never be anything really she only wore for like two episodes or something like that and i'm assuming she would have been in that pink color spinoff which is gonna get picked up but a new suit that's just wasted spent all this money on this suit and it was kind of all for nothing dc also contacts painkiller and his group of teams so that he can help aid jefferson pierce get his embezzlement off of him while also helping take down tobias from behind the scenes and taking care of ishmael and all the other metas and people that are helping him being corrupt and then anissa's friend darius also dies now when he was introduced in the beginning of this season i thought what game he's playing is he gonna be a part of the corrupt people with tobias but then he was just like a genuine guy who was helping people in the hospital with meta genes and pregnant babies which they didn't know both anissa and him did not know and apparently he had a bunch of secrets and then when both him and grace visit him at his apartment and whatnot he's found dead she gets a usb for him I just can't help feeling that they have plans for him other than dying because he seemed like a prominent role for the anissa arc stuff but then he just dies not on screen which kind of weird anytime there's an off-screen death it just kind of sucks but he did serve his role and purpose and getting information out there to take down tobias and all about the secrets of the meta pregnant ladies as well and then with the emitters in tobias's hand all at the same time anissa jen and black lightning all lose their powers at the wrong time jeff is fighting ishmael jen is falling from the sky again and then cars running at anissa her just clapping again it would just all fade out in the next episode because nothing would happen 
Number 40, The Book of Markovia, Chapter 2, Lynn's Addiction, from Season 3, Episode 11. I think the issue that I have with this episode is mainly of Lady Eve's involvement. They brought her back after post-crisis and only for her to be in half of episodes and work behind the scenes and then get killed off in a very same way. And it's like, what was the point of that? I think that was the only post-crisis. Well, I don't know. Hold on. That isn't. Gravedigger was. Out of the two things of post-crisis, Lady Eve was a bit useless. Called a hit on Gam last season. Did that. They needed to explain that, but they didn't explain that at all. By the end of season two, nothing to do with that. So they needed to, I guess, tie in that loose end. And Lady Eve called it post-crisis timeline-wise. Both her and Gambi have their standoffish kind of moment again. Odell also gets taken out again. I think the same time in this season. Two times, I think. Or is it? Hold on. Okay, never mind. He just goes to Gotham. The Makovians now have, I believe, Lynn, Jace, and Tobias now because they were planning to get out of ASA and then Markovians just snatched them up and then Jin finally sees Khalil alive or painkiller he almost kills them but lightning knocked them out starts bawling thought this guy that she knew that she loved just came back alive out of nowhere Odell manipulated her and lied to her and whatnot and then there's also a mole within the ASA that's helping the Pierce family I forgot this soldier's name but this guy's also helping Lynn get out both Jeff and Anissa Meehan claiming to help they don't believe him at first but he does buy their trust and helping and defeating the ASA and their shenanigans and whatnot Number 39, The Book of Occupation, Chapter 1, Birth of Blackbird, from Season 3, Episode 1. So Lynn and Jeff are stuck at the ASA. They're testing out on him while some other characters get introduced, Jeremiah and others that I forgot about, but they will help in aiding defeat the ASA as well. But Jeremiah is with Lala later on, program of checking in on each, I guess, prisoner or patient, and Jeff is one of them. Now, one thing that did bother me on Palm Rewatching is him seeing through things and then hearing them. That is never brought up. He's not in his suit at all, and he can see through things and i don't know why that was the case do they ever explain this or did i miss it on rewatch because this felt weird i was like what's the point of this how can you see through this did they explain this or am i just an idiot for not picking up on it it was only news when he was captured in the asa thing aside from that i don't remember he used that before or in season three at all anissa also introduces her new persona blackbird because the asa don't want any of the pierce family going out Here's another alias blackbird and she's a bird i guess well not a bird but i don't know blackbird just sounds cool and while having the same ability as a thunder no one's really bringing up hey maybe you're thunder nope and the costume looks cool oh they use this kid named Issa, the boy who was rejected by his family he only uses him to get information out of what he wants and then poison him later on already just kind of showing you the motives of odell he's willing to do literally anything to take down Kovian and maybe take control of all metas and because they are experimenting and making metas as well just like the markovians they are both at war Lala also wakes up to that briefcase tobias had and that really does not come back until oh boy i don't remember very later on i completely forgot about that and it's also revealed by Tobias that the ASA is also working under Odell. Odell is also working under the US president, which means in this world, the US president is pretty much corrupted and making people do his dirty work because he's a president. He has the whole world in his hand and in his control, so he can do whatever he wants. It was still a strong opening for the third season. The only thing that got me was the whole seeing through things. That never comes back. At least I don't remember. Number 38, The Book of Resistance, Chapter 1, Knocking on Heaven's Door from Season 3, Episode 6. This episode will serve as the start of the resistance. Henderson has to go outside his typical police things, recruit everyone in Freeland, resist against the ASA who are watching over them inch by inch all over Freeland. They have soldiers on them, stuff, and Henderson has to do some things that he wouldn't do and be here within his own right. Nissa is also dying because of a confrontation by, I believe, Painkiller? I think. Well, hold on, I don't know. Wait, hold on. Who did she get poisoned by? There's just venom inside of her, and then immediately Gamma creates like a serum so she can live on. The episode opens up with her giving out a message, saying her goodbyes to her friends and family, but you know, that isn't the case at all. We also get to know more about Brandon, this kid in high school who just transferred and is here for Jace because of his powers that can like control earth matter. I think it's earth matter, right? That's why he has a bunch of pots and plants around just in case we're getting into his apartment. He has earth to protect himself. It combines well Jen's powers and they start bonding, just being friends, doing a school together, talking about Dr. Jace, his mom. He gets a picture of Lynn, which is what causes Jen to go after him, but then he's just here for Dr. Jace who killed his mother. And then they also find painkillers off in his empty. And Lynn also moves out due to her addiction. By this point, she's not long into her addiction because the Odell Major Gray had her addicted on green light, but because of this, she acts unrationally and she decides to move out. She wants to sleep basically at the ASA so that she has more time to work on her experiments because of his addiction. And this would be a prolonged thing for Lynn to do because this is the best that Lynn's been used out of the whole season or whole show because she just used very well in her expertise. Number 37, The Book of Occupation, Chapter 3, Agent Odell's Pipe Dream from Season 3, Episode 3. There's this man-made virus spreading throughout the ASA, which I completely forgot 
forgot about. Forgot about this whole thing in episode 3. But this is also the episode where Jefferson gets his new suit by the ASA. It looks way better. There's no these Leon big neon lights. It looks way more slicker and cooler of the yellow lightning. But it is struck by ASA and Gabby later on will remove the chip from it so that they don't follow Jefferson with the suit or use the suit in a way to attack him in any way, shape, or form. Although also use torture methods to get Tobias to spit out some secrets about what is it? Hold on. Markovia stuff and how the shadow board works and whatnot. And Tobias, by the way, by this point, he looks, man, he looks awful. His aging thing and certain thing ain't working, so he's aging at the normal rate that he is. He's probably like hundreds of years old now, probably, but pretty bad wig, won't lie. Behind his back, it's like white hair is coming out. But anyways, he looks old. That's the whole point. And this will also reunites with Grace. The issue isn't brought up by her whole skin until on, but it is a good progression with their relationship as well. And then Jeff is released from the ASA, which begs the question why he was even in it. Was he in there just to get like a new suit? Or what was the point of it? Maybe it was for Ordell to look inside and know the ins and outs of Jefferson's meta abilities. Just in case he like goes rogue, they can take care of him. I don't know, maybe aside from that and the seeing through things and he was only there for like three episodes and then all the whole family reunites. Lynn is stuck being ASA office, but I don't know. I didn't see the whole point of making him be a part inside the ASA facility for only three episodes. Or maybe it was a saving budget thing. Maybe they were, you know what? We need to save money on Black Lightning stuff. So let's just prevent him from using his powers for three episodes so we can save the budget. Number 36, The Book of Secrets, Chapter 1, Prodigal Son from Season 2, Episode 11. So this is the streaming episode for Painkiller or Slash Khalil. Talking about maybe put him in a pod would make sense, which for Lynn says no because it would kill him. But you know, Odell and the ASA always find a way to be like, you know what? We can always make him become a Terminator-like character later on in the next season. Hopefully knows maybe he could survive all of this with his spine being ripped out by Tobias. But in the end, he can't be saved and he died. But again, there would be hope later because he comes back looking cool as ever in a goddamn pod. It's also here that we find out how Tobias has been alive for so long because of Dr. Jace. She used the anti-serum aging thing on herself and Tobias got some of that so both of them look relatively young for their natural age. Like they're probably again like 80 years old, 90 years old birth wise but they look like they're in their 30s and 40s. I really want that to be like a thing in the real world. Who wouldn't want to live for so long? You probably get bored but it's like listen you get to experience oh I don't know especially the way the world is right now maybe I don't want to. Either way it's a cool thing to have in the show so they can prolong their life and it's also here that Jace tells Tobias that there are other pods that were here and then that's when he finds like the other pods that have like four or five people in them and then that's when Tobias thinks of the idea of the meta human army so that he could take over the world essentially. Number 35 The Book of Reconstruction Chapter 2 Unacceptable Losses from Season 4 Episode 2. Jefferson is continuing the whole recklessness depression stuff where he's going out using powers without his suit and I believe this is also the episode where he meets Shakur for the very first time talking in without the suit. He doesn't seem to care because of the loss of Henderson. The fact that he's gone now he just feels his complete loss but he's also losing himself and his whole family because they're out doing other things and they're struggling and he needs to be there for all of them but he's not really there for them. Stuck in his own head letting Freeland go. He's letting himself go and because of this there's a chain reaction of Tobias high in power, Freeland being in chaos, being led by Destiny, Cartel, and Hunter Gang Lala. His daughters are going out but not doing so well because they're not veterans like he is. He's losing his marriage with Lynn. I was doing well in the season 4 now there's arguing every now and then so he's still losing himself in this episode. While out in the battlefield, Jin is trying to stop this whole gang war between the Cartel and Hunter Gang but in doing so gets a kid killed and it's also the start of I'm assuming no hold on that's later on I think it is I thought this is the episode where they're gonna start their feud between Lopez and Jin but I'm assuming that's episode 4 ish well I guess it could start here with the kid dying now because of Jin she feels responsible for that DC and everyone else is trying to get her it wasn't your fault but it still kind of was and then Lin also wants to be someone she's not she injects herself with meta human booster thing it has abilities but then in doing so just messes herself up hurts herself she's trying to be someone who she's not and that becomes an issue and that's why both her and Jeff they go to therapy because they need to talk to each other they need someone to talk to she realizes that she had no one essentially she needed to feel important the way she feels important is to be a hero like her whole family even though in the very beginning of the series they didn't want Jefferson going out it's just kind of funny four seasons later hey she wants to be a hero but it's not who she's meant to be because she's just forcing this on herself she needs to find some other way to be helpful and important and then Tobias is slowly building up his army and is slowly corrupting the whole city of Freeland number 34 Lawanda the book of burial from season one episode three because of the death of Lawanda, Jefferson's past student, there's a march for her, there's a protest for her, but within this, Cyanide and Tobias, they got their shenanigans going on, so Cyanide shoots one of these people, but then in doing so, shoots through Khalil as well, which in doing so, paralyzes him. In his school gym scene, he says that he wants to get out of Freeland, it's not a good place at all, and so whenever this happens, it's heartbreaking because Jim knows he wanted to get out, but because he was in his march, he can't do that no more, and he's paralyzed, so he's stuck here forever. We also get the introductions of Grace, who will become 
um, important to Anissa and Lady Eve, who is a cool character. Her scene, that, that is this a scene where she's like cutting that body up and there's a bunch of liquid and sounds and whatnot. That was creepy, gross, and awesome, but it's like, this is an intriguing character, but they got rid of her a bit too, too soon, a little bit. They just had no plans for her, but she is a cool character. I just wish they would have done more with her, especially when she came back post-crisis. And I do like the split between the media and all the people and freelance on Black Lightning, how he's come back. Some people like him, some people don't. I like that divisiveness of being like, not everyone's on board. Even within the whole family, and this is really with Black Lightning and Henderson's not. There's even that inner battle within the family as well. Gamby being real shady, leading video evidence of just anything regarding Jefferson. And that will come back later on to tell him the whole truth on protecting the family. And then Jefferson gets bad at him and all that. He was responsible for everything. That will come back all around. Something that he thought would be better if Jefferson and the whole family would not know about. And there's also nothing particularly wrong with this episode. It's just the other episodes from here on out are just better than this episode. Like, again, this is a hard ranking. I'm like, each entry is kind of like, well, you could argue that episode down and up are, you know, they're better. Like, I wouldn't have no complaints about that. It's just, this is subjective, very hard. So, other episodes are just better. Number 33, Book of Resurrection, Chapter 2, Closure. This is the series finale for the entire show. And while it is very much rushed, like, you get that feeling it's rushed, I think it caps off the series in a relatively good note. There is that weird scene of China not being with the others, and there's rumors and theories going around that there was something happening behind the scenes, which is what led to the end of the series. Again, this is all just rumors. This isn't true, but it is very evident in this finale, just being like, what's going on behind the scenes? Because that scene was weird. And if you weren't already suspicious of, like, cast drama and whatnot, this scene alone probably is, like, the icing on the cake on that. But the episode itself, I like. The end of Tobias, it was rushed. Him dying without no regrets whatsoever. Lala waking up from the cement in order to just get the last laugh of the entire series and on Tobias as well because he was a cause of this, being immortal. Jefferson being able to reflect seeing his father, being able to rise up from the dead, that was a really cool scene. All the smoke and whatnot. Gamby, Grayson, and Nissa, they were doing shenanigans stuff that weren't important at all, but it was fine. Jen versus Jen was cool. This thing or glaze that was watching Jennifer go up and it slowly inching and inching closer to closer to her. So she'd take over her DNA, come back to face off and take over her own identity. And then face off against Lopez and finishing off that story. They've been bickering with each other for like the first handful of episodes. Granted, Lopez, whole rush thing. Shakur, he's a cool character, but that feels rushed as well. The whole thing feels rushed. And I get it, you don't know, totally like this finale, but again, I think it ends off the series in a good note. It wasn't bad. It was just like, you know what? It ended, part not the way that the creators wanted it to end, but it was a good ending. And Lena getting remarried and all that stuff. It's like a very happy ending. Lala like gets the last laugh. Tobias is down. In the future, maybe Jefferson, Anissa, and Jen, they can show up in future crossovers. But as for now, they're just being a family and freelance, being happy in their own city. If there's one thing, Pinkiller should have gotten seen with Jen, but he didn't want to see her. So Pinkiller is out of his mind now. So he's just Khalil now as well. So, I mean, he probably could go, but probably done off screen. But I think it ended the series on a good way. Number 32, The Book of Markovia, Chapter 1, Blessings and Curses, Reborn from Season 3, Episode 10. This episode was the aftermath of post-crisis. So we got Jeff flying, talking about how he met Superman and all that stuff. Jen is stuck in a loop. And then Gambit explains to them that they have antimatter traces. And this is a short little scene just to connect the shows all together. But it was just cool being like, hey, you know, you were in crisis. That was cool. And then going back to Freeland again and this bubble or prime now. Lynn, by this point now, is a full-on green light junkie. She's messing up the house or room. She gets it out so she can like get to it. Like she's just a full-on junkie thinking about nothing else. Just thinking about her work, her experiments the pods even the kids and again the best that lens has been used in the entire show she's great in it the actor she does an amazing job at it you see then also sneaks into gamby's like underground basement lab and finds a picture of eve it's a post-crisis thing and again eve is kind of useless post-crisis i mean she's just there doing criminal stuff that's pretty much it once back in the shadow board and this is also coming into her own as blackbird and leading a team you know evolve into you know leading herself or leading like a team of meta human heroes or whatnot but she leads a team of resistance to fight back against the asa also get out of freeland as well and then jen finally confronts odell being like she's done working for odell in the asa she didn't realize that was manipulated by odell and going up in the sky and using her powers embracing her powers even more with brandon by her side helping as well with his earth gravitational powers brandon's power they look really cool earth elemental stuff and it's only after both of them get captured by the asa because they want to use the bait or even test subjects she tries to shoot odell but it's like a fake out image thing so he's probably gonna go after her she's like running away now on the deep end with brandon number 31 one, the Book of Ruin, Chapter 3, Things Fall Apart from Season 4, Episode 8. Because of Tobias' shenanigans and control and power and corruption, Jeff gets an embezzlement charge. I will say that there was a missed opportunity in Season 4 to have no, like, interaction with the students, with Jefferson, inspiring them, just like the first two seasons was. I think that was a missed opportunity. There's also the scene where Uriah and Jen meet, TC St. Thirsty, standing 
not for Jefferson and whatnot. It's also where everybody finds out that Val, who's working for the Bias, can depower Meta Powers, which is her own power. And there's also an episode where T contacts the team of Painkiller, friend whose name I forgot about, Painkiller to help Pierce family and take down Tobias. And then Ishmael finds out about Grace and Anissa. And the only reason he's here is because Destiny tells him to stick around so he could deal with a bunch of Metas. He needs to kill at least 100 Metas to get inside and be a part of the League of Assassins. That's like the requirement, which is a lot of Metas. And so he gives Anissa and Grace a hard time and he's about to beat them both the butt without knowing that Grace has these shapeshifting abilities, treats, he just gets on his motorcycle and he's like, shapeshifter, okay, he's not even phased by it. He's not phased by the fact that he didn't take a loss, but he retreated knowing what to do because he is a soldier, he's an assassin, takes note of that, and next time, he will take care of and get rid of these metas. He's so certain about his abilities to kill, he'll just take notes, next time, he'll just kill them. And then on the flip side, that's when Gambi finds out he's trying to be a part of the League of Assassins, Number 30, The Book of Revelation from Season 1, Episode 8. This episode was the first mention of the ASA and how they see Black Lightning as threat to not only them, but also Freeland and everyone else, but mainly them. They don't see him as someone who's helping. They see him as something, you know, causing an issue. So not only this season, but throughout, you know, the whole show, they have to do with ASA, Secret Service, and agents, and within this season as well. And Jennifer starts to manifest her powers. I think her phone gets all charged up and she starts freaking out. She has like a friend over. She tells her friend to get out. She's freaking out. Doesn't Anissa and Anissa doesn't seem shocked at all because she also has powers and she's about to tell her in the next episode be like guess what we're like the Incredibles or, okay maybe not the Incredibles but we're super meta family team family they also play more into the whole green light vaccine things or just green light and then vaccines that were happening 30 years ago right around when his grandfather Alvin was researching as well and he died for it as well that comes back out facility and then Anissa protects Jefferson obviously he wants to get Lala talking to himself because he starts seeing those of the people that he's killed so he's going around just kind of talking to himself cool aspect to this character he is useless overall whenever you think about it he is a useless character he always dies and comes back but i don't know man you just kind of feel bad for the guy he keeps dying and coming back seeing the goes of the people that he's killed i don't know i just like that and then gambi tells the truth about jefferson and how he was the cause of his father's death he hide everything because he wanted to protect them jefferson wants none of that he wants him to stay away from his family but eventually he's gonna come back because it's uncle gambi he always helps out the family he raised jefferson so there's still this bond between the the two but for now in this small chunk of episode they need a break from each other number 29 three sevens the book of thunder from season one episode six this episode is only memorable for that fight between anissa and jefferson without realizing that they're both fighting each other by the end the secret's out jefferson has to tell one of his daughters that he is black lightning she needs to get a new costume because that costume that she has it's a prototype but it looks whack but before all that anissa decides to show her the statue because it stands for something that i forgot about her and other people they wanted to show the statue because it doesn't stand for something good. Jane gets cyberbullied at school because she's in high school. Kids are mean. Jefferson's also been having headaches, so Lynn does a brain scan of his brain and shows that it has the same effect of like green light that's currently happening right now and with the vaccines like 30 years ago. And this also reveals to her mother before even Jeff that she is a meta. And then Jefferson plans on killing Tobias. He is right there, but because it's cut short because of fam, Lynn needs some help. And then Gabby is the one who like trained Eve and everything. Gabby was a part of the ASA, knowing more secrets about this guy tells us why he knows so much and how he's able to do technology all that stuff hack and tobias makes an offer to khalil onto walk again and that will be probably one of the worst but also best decisions in his life because he would you know die for it again his spine ripped out and become the infamous painkiller as well episode is just humble beginnings of the show setting up some things progressing the plot but also being good at the same time a lot of just humble beginnings Number 28, The Book of Resistance, Chapter 3, The Battle of Franklin Terrence. I honestly only remember this episode of Miss Franklin. So she's in this house. The ASC want her house to for like a base or something, but she stands her ground and it's very, you know, heroic and everything. But in doing so, she's going to get herself killed, but she doesn't care because, you know, Freeland is a community. Some neighborhoods of Freeland and the ASA just watching over them, just being like, get out, please. But because of this, Jeff is like, you know what? Just help this old lady out. Yes, she's going to get herself killed. Just help her out. One of the agents, William, he's also one of those metas that refuses to believe that he's like a meta 30 years ago but he is he like mimics and steals powers steals jefferson's powers and just realized that the reason why he's wearing a suit is because the powers make his body a bit tired and possibly kill him which is why he's always wearing a suit lynn also has plans to get out tobias out of the asa but markovians have him and dr jace and then gammy picks up lynn but left her bag because that's her junkie bag you know that's all the needles and the sniffing and all that stuff it's all there and she misses it tc is also introduced when gammy goes underground to power up some things he meets him he's afraid of him but learns to brace him he's like okay he's a good guy he'll be on the good side and we get that painkiller moment when thunder's getting everyone out he just shows up looking all badass 
this is probably why this episode is probably high or like around the middle higher part because of that one moment just coming in all looking cool and shit number 27 the book of little black lie from season 1 episode 9 the secrets are all out Jen now knows everyone's secrets they all know her secret but the most interesting thing about it is the fact that Jen's a little different she doesn't want these powers and that makes it interesting conflict within herself and the whole family because she just wants to be a normal kid a normal girl but because of these powers she doesn't feel normal at all and she's afraid to go out meet with her friends and whatnot she's afraid they're gonna you know fizzle out or just come out of nowhere and so because of her sort of reaction to her powers that brings it really just interesting compare and contrast to Anissa how she embraces it Jefferson he's like I guess he wasn't forced to but he was trained to as well so interesting getting all the different reactions from the three different Pierce members Anissa finally gets her thunder suit all the yellow one that looks pretty cool the best looking no it is the better of her other suits well I don't know Black Bear looks cool as well I don't know but it looks good and then going back to Jin I like the fact that she understands that her family's a whole superhero stuff she understands all of that but still doesn't want it and you know you could appreciate it. she just doesn't want any of this she wants to just be free but because of this it kind of forces her to do things that she wouldn't do and be a hero basically be the symbol of hope just like black lightning and thunder is and helping her city freeland she has an opportunity to change things and she just doesn't really care about that after dealing with asa agents and police in this episode by the end everyone comes together as like, okay no more lies tell the truth they tell the truth until the next season obviously number 26 the book of the apocalypse chapter one the alpha from season two episode 15 keep guys down heartbreaking and sad to open up the episode of keep guy dying because he was just a funny bit in this season who's not really like a hero but because of wind blowing and whatnot he gets shot for it but he was just this funny guy throughout season two and for it to end like that in a very tragic way i thought it would have ended happy but really in the black lighting so i probably should have expected him to get killed the family also sets out this code rule of no going out alone unless you're another member or meta or team and no killing which causes an issue for anissa and jen because they want to get rid of tobias terrorized freeland he killed khalil he killed their grandfather it's like why not just kill him but because you know they're a superhero there has to be some sort of code and it's like yep this is what confirms of not killing Tobias permanently or not in an aggressive way that Jeff wanted to in the beginning of the series because that was the whole point of creating Black Lightning to get rid of Tobias but because of his daughters and not wanting to turn his daughters into like criminals or have that moral compass and then Jace decides to just wake up all the pods from 30 years ago so we have like Shakedown, Heat Stroke, Cold Snap and then New Wave all of these names by the way aren't the best for first heard them again i was like what kind of names are these cold snap new they're not bad but it's just yeah i don't know maybe some other names but either way they're there to terrorize freeland and give thunder blackbird lightning everyone else or any mother trying to stop Tobias a hard time and then this episode also confirms the fact that grace is indeed a shapeshifter it isn't a result of green light or the vaccine or anything she is just a shapeshifter gambi finally makes jennifer's suit the prototype version unfinished version but it's technically the finished version it looks really cool she can fly up in the sky like throughout this season and she's testing her powers up she has lightning but she is clearly the strongest out of the family where thunder has you know the breathing technique like lightning has all the lightning stuff and all the experiences lightning powerful she can go up in the sky why not shoot beams and park destroy buildings later on and so she's there at tobias about to kill him but then she starts freaking out and having like lightning spasms and whatnot and then gabby comes over to save her but then in doing so hurts himself as well and then that also causes tobias to retreat and get really angry later on as well because meta's got involved and anytime he's trying to be on top metas and black lightning specifically always gets involved and ruins it number 25 the book of war chapter one homecoming from season three episode 14 again lady eve's involvement is useless interacting with lala and his gang now and there's a gang rivalry going on now dr jace does reveal the fact that brandon got his prize from his father and he inherited from them so his father was probably the meta his mother was there to aid him they probably fell in love gave birth to brandon and now he has his father's you know powers and elemental gravitation earth stuff and then pink almost escapes from Kilo's mind but that firewall is created and gets him back into that door and cage where you can lock him up. I don't know if this is a post-crisis change but the US is responsible for the war of the ASA Markovian and Gravedigger because Gravedigger himself is a crisis change. So I don't know if because of this change history the US being responsible is a post-crisis change or not. I'm not sure about that but if it is that's gonna be cool. If it isn't it's still cool. And then because Lin left the meta boosters at the Markovian's office or whatever Gravedigger injects himself 
himself with some to make it even more powerful now his abilities i don't remember them it's like mind reading powerful he's experienced so he's been in the war he has a scar in his eye he's just a cool meta and a cool character and the fact that he didn't show up at the end kind of sucked and it's probably because of covid related and he had a rush thing so same thing with brandon like brandon and, and a handful of other characters that were in the season were not in season four because they just couldn't do that remember why there was that one year skip there was no time skip then you know where's gravedigger what's all these characters it just would have made sense to have a time skip if they knew they were gonna have these actors back because of the restrictions and then lynn also decides to come clean in this episode being like she is a full-on junkie but she comes clean thinking that she's done but becomes more addicted next season but then that stops immediately as well so but it's like half you know truth and half lying because she's still effective number 24 black jesus from season one episode four green light is introduced as a drug as a way to sell and make money for criminal and you know there's mob bosses and leaders like tobias and become important later on as well for lynn but in the first season it just starts off as a drug for something for a high school kids to use due to jefferson's that he uses it and he gets abilities and jeff has to then use his powers to take this kid down it's affecting kids in the school and making them possibly die and also resurrecting them as well two bits is also introduced and he's always just been that character that's just funny like he's doing bad things but because black lightning comes in and be like all right do better because he is like a student of jefferson's just do better man and he does and he helps during the third season against the asa uh, he's just a fun character to have around and keeping him around again the, what the fourth season didn't have is having these certain characters show up early and then later on you know help we pierce family later on like stuff like that like two bits is a perfect example of building a character or having a character around who can later on help and this like beat up some thugs or powers and hang around grace for a while kindling their you know little thing here and there gambi is continuing being shady erasing footages and whatnot of thunder because he erases that footage of anissa beating up a thug so he realizes that anissa is a meta she has powers but also covers her back jen decides to stick by khalil's side with him being crippled also helping him but that will just kind of push everyone else away whenever tobias gets by him be like what up kid i got a deal for you and tobias sister tori who shows up her character will become kind of a catalyst for everything after her death he would just frame a picture of her as a reference to be like he's doing this for her he's doing this for his sister tori it's very sentimental and tobias uses that as a motivation to keep on going Number 23, The Book of Resistance, Chapter 2, Henderson's Opus, from Season 3, Episode 7. Odell goes away again. Now, the actor probably signed on to only show up in, like, a handful of episodes, but, like, the way they write him off, he's either, like, hurt or something, or something happens to him, or he needs to go. I always just find it funny. And because of his absence, Major Gray's in charge, and she does an amazing job because she starts giving in and giving out information so that the Pierce family, the Resistance, they can have an upper hand against the ASA. And Gamby Lynn find out that Painkiller is indeed Khalil, and he's programmed to be one of the best assassins ever which he is because he's awesome the episode also serves as a training not montage i was about to say montage but training for grace's skin shapeshifting abilities because she doesn't know how to control it just yet the previous handful of episodes she's been imitating but not for very long with the help of gambi and anissa both brandon and jen they don't get suspicious of each other they do eye each other i think brandon's like the new kid at school jen shows them around but eventually they come to find out they both have meta powers they're both connected somehow with dr jace and her mother and all that stuff and he also gets involved with their resistance and going against asa jen just gets manipulated in season three and gets lied to thinking about it now a lot about khalil deleted by odell yeah no wonder she always wants to resist back against her family thinking about it now it makes sense and then with odell assigning painkiller with a bunch of targets his next target is now black lightning so he's just again he's like a assassin slash terminator slash winter soldier type character in the season he's just a killing machine execute and repeat over and over again it does suck though when he has to like go away for a bit if he'll come in and take control of the main body and then pink killer has to sit back for a bit number 22 the book of reconstruction chapter 3 despite all my rage from season 4 episode 3 so going along with the whole season 4 depressing route with jefferson he starts having nightmares about tobias taking over his family and breaking down his family visually this leads to a fight club an illegal fight club that is shown on the black market and jeff's like you know what i guess i'll join this fight club under the orders of lala and jeremiah and he struggles a bit with this first guy because he is a big guy but then he defeats him and he keeps doing it over and over again until Lala even shows up has to ask him are you sure about this like he has like a family and everything like he knows Lala personally and he's like all right but Lala just warned him it's not until you know Jen and TC finds out that he's in this illegal fight club where he has to stop he looks bad in front of his daughters and you know he needs someone just to tell him wake up stop checking out essentially they even bring back their old suit so Gambi can test it with a DEG weapon and it turns out to be lethal against not only humans but menace as well which means everybody involved needs to be careful going up because the police are after them and Chief Lopez is under Tobias orders as well 
well. And then Jennifer decides to create a social media account for Lightning, which will come back and play. I thought it was like, I didn't mind it. Like, what was the point of this? But then it comes like, bite Lopez in the ass to record her socially so that everyone can mock her and laugh at Lopez for being Lopez, I guess. But then, you know, this social media account starts gaining attraction and it's just good marketing for Jennifer because she's known as a hero in Freeland, but now everyone else around the world can see her and have interviews and take pictures with fans, interact with a fan in person if they request it, which could be dangerous. And obviously Jennifer doesn't listen to Gamby or Jeff, all the dangerous signs. She just ignores it because she wants to be free. She's allowed to be free. And so once freedom is there, she just takes it, but not without knowing the consequences of Lala and Destiny and Tobias and Lopez and DG Weapons, all that stuff. And then the last shot I love where Tobias invites Lynn over for dinner. And then just when they're, you know, talking and whatnot about work and ALS because his sister Tori had ALS, Jefferson walks in, sees it, and you know, it's primed to have an argument next episode. Number 21, Book of War, Chapter 2, Freedom Ain't Free from Season 3, Episode 15. Gravedigger being related to Black Lightning, that was a bit too... It wasn't on the nose, but it was more like quick. It was like, we'll introduce this character and turns out he is related to Jefferson. And it's like, I don't know how I feel about that, but that was a bit too quick to be like, yeah, this is, you know, he's family now, but he doesn't care because he's been in this post crisis timeline change backstory in his black and white backstory. We find out that he was experimented on and then over time, he just took over and took charge being on Markovia's side and then being this leader as well and being super awesome. And while that's all cool, it's just the whole family part where he's related. It's just, I just kind of feel indifferent about it. Maybe they were going to do in fourth season if he was going to come back. Maybe try to convince Gravedigger to be on the good side, being the first meta on screen, like the first known meta of the Arrowverse. But even if Jefferson comes out saying that they're related, they still got to fight because, you know, it's a comic book show and fights always, you know, resolves issues, obviously, as we find out in multiple films and media, fighting is always the solution and it won't end badly, totally won't at all whatsoever. But this is the penultimate episode, so, you know, they're really like the ASA with Odell's getting ready for attacking on Markovitz and the Pierce family while dealing with Gravedigger and then everyone's gonna gather out, team up for the very awesome finale later on with everyone being involved, like, and I mean everyone, TC and the girl he's trying to kiss at that stairs, painkiller, like, everyone is involved. Well, I don't know, wait, is painkiller involved? I think he is, right? I forgot. Either way, there's even like a pre-fight in the last scene of him fighting Gravedigger and that will lead into the finale as well. So, number 20, The Book of Rebellion, Chapter 3. Now, the only reason why this episode is as high as it is is because of that last scene. Okay, not last scene, but that scene of Tobias ripping out Khalil's spine and the spines moving kept Kilo walking was awesome that's the only reason why this episode up here aside from that this is like the closure of the runaway arc so Jen is back with her family the family's all worried and Khalil he like knows Jefferson's identity because obvious the goggles don't work it's kind of like I don't know Superman with the glasses stuff it shouldn't work but it just does but even with him willing to you know tell the truth and everything Cutter comes in ruins everything Henderson calls Khalil's missing Cutter takes Khalil to Dubai's and he just rips out that spine it's great it's great it's awful it's pain and agony and he just throws him like garbage and trash next to that church guy whose name i forgot about it's all good stuff and like with them saying that they're tired of running it kind of makes this episode in the last two arc or whatever this called feel useless because at the end of the day they were tired of running so like, you know what we made a mistake let's go back we're reckless kids thinking we can run away from our, our parents however you know Kilo's i guess single parent is now tobias because he like owns him but it's just like why then why start this it's just it felt like a waste of time but i guess it also furthers the relationship between Khalil and Jen, the fact that they're both willing to just be like, you know what, we're just gonna leave. But it was still kind of like these three episodes could have been used for something, something much more interesting. Because I didn't find this part interesting at all. The running away arc and this coming right after the Looker Book of Blood arc, it ruined the momentum and pace of season two for me. Where it was just like a screeching halt, being like, okay, I guess the whole cast is gonna find Jen. Number 19, The Book of Occupation, Chapter 4, Lens Ouroboros, or Ouroboros? Something like that. The episode served as a place for the ASA to assert their dominance over everyone and everything. So at Henderson's police station, he is in control of that. He's the chief, but you have ASA agents being like, nope, this is our territory now because of a virus and everything and taking over. They are literally watching over everyone, including Odell and Freeland. So there's no freedom whatsoever. Jeff and Anissa have an argument, a family argument about Blackbird, but Blackbird is needed, so, you know, he allows her to go out and he also learns about grace abilities and it will be the start of lynn's green light addiction and seeing her crazy eyes and her craziness all over this season and it was planted by odell and major gray just watching behind the scenes doing her work her expertise because she's great at that and she needs to be addicted and focused and it will also be the start of the manipulation starting with jen when odell just kind of like pushing her and edging her giving her a new suit that has a tracker on so you can track her asa but then gammy gets both of those out and because of odell and asa being involved in everything it forces the whole town even 
telling Lala at a certain point to be like, you know what? We gotta fight back. So this is a start catalyst, which is be kind of all over season three in order for all of Freeland to fight back against ASA. The resistance is a part of that as well. The suits, the line, Khalil, all of that. So they're dealing with bad Grave Digger, bad Odell, bad ASA, all of that. Oh yeah, and it will be the start of Painkiller's Poison. We see him poison somebody for the very first time and all of the veins are popping up. Number 18, The Book of Reconstruction, Chapter 4, A Light in the Darkness from Season 4, Episode 4. This episode resolved the issues that both Jefferson and Lynn with their relationship. They're going to therapy and we've seen her with Tobias having dinner. That just fumes it. But by the end, they're like, you know what? We're adults. You know, we have this break of marriage thing. It's complicated because this marriage has always been complicated right from the very start. So they're okay, you know what? Maybe working for Tobias isn't such a bad idea because you can be the mole. Or he figures out how to be Black Lightning once again. And so, you know, they hug it out and whatnot and they're able to work through their issues. However, the only issue is there's a setback in the next episode. So it's like, this is kind of undone, but also not. And then they have arguments later after this. So it's like, wait, so what was the point of this? If they're resolving their issues in this fourth episode of the final season like that just creates an issue of messy writing and i don't know what happened there but this could have been the perfect way to be like yeah resolve our issues now we're gonna work together as a team now and as a family once again without any issues but there is issues now then jefferson and tobias they have a meet over dinner as well and uh i just like the fact that jefferson calls bala red knockoffs of toledo and cyanide i just found that funny they're just knockoffs man come out with something else i just thought that was hilarious kind of poking fun at themselves but he won't find his motivation there his motivation is detective Shakur. Core. He believes in Black Lightning because of Henderson. Because of his passing, he is the protege of him. He needs to find some kind of hope. The police are corrupt, especially Lopez. She's tripping. So he needs Black Lightning to come back. And because of his speech at this bar, and Jefferson just so happens to be sitting there, he hears this. He's like, you know what? Time to step up again. This whole speech, while it's good, it seems a little bit too late because right after this, Jen goes up in the sky, something takes over, and then particles. She disappears. And then that just kind of derails his happiness and stepping up that Jefferson has because his daughter is now gone and has a new face. In the next episode so it was very hopeful with your core but then bam tragedy hits again you know not like complete tragedy but something changes and they have to adjust to it number 17 painkiller from season 4 episode 7 the spin-off series that sadly is not gonna get picked up it was official that you know series is not gonna get picked up because i don't know i don't know why it was a toss-up between naomi and painkiller and they're like, you know what let's just do naomi she's new painkiller is also like a somewhat new character but he's been a thing on black landing for years now but naomi is fresh and new we'll just take a chance on that which I understand they want to do something new as well but I really wanted this pilot backdoor pilot to get picked up but it didn't the one thing that did bother me though is the weird look of it it has this neon futuristic look kind of like Wakanda and I don't know how I feel but I'm so indifferent about that because it's obviously it's supposed to be way different than you know Black Lightning but it's also like if there's a city like this futuristic then what are we doing in Freeland here granted that's Jefferson's you know town and city but it's like yo over here in wherever city that Pingal is in it looks cool it also looks a bit dodgy because that car that he rides it most all CG and it looks I don't know if it was budget or time probably a bit of both but it, it looked a bit rough I liked all the characters I didn't fall in love with them because you know th there was no follow-up but I liked all of them forgot all of their names but that's okay and Nessa and Grace and maybe Jen was possibly gonna be a part of the spin-off because this was during their honeymoon both Anissa and Grace just so happened to be there since Pinky only still has our program to kill the Pierce family he's there but even the episode within itself both of them working together like this actor had to basically talk with himself and that is not easy basically what I'm doing right now I'm just talking in a mic to know Nobody. He carried this episode and mainly the large majority of the second half of the final season on his back because he's just a great character. And so when you have these monologues of him talking to himself within his own mind, those are awesome. And then by the end, having them work together and shaking hands, be like, look, we got to work together to defeat whoever this is. And then they work together. It's all good stuff. And then this lady who's probably going to be the villain is the daughter of Odell. And apparently Odell is alive. So no one really dies here. Kind of like Supernatural. No one really dies. And then also by the end, Anissa is willing to forgive Painkiller. He asks about Jen. She's dead different he can't go right to her just yet because of painkiller and like the opening comic sequence thing painkiller that was awesome as well in this japanese form sword and everything it was awesome i wish it would have been picked up i really like it it's probably not as good as it should be it's just pretty good it's a pretty good backdoor pilot not amazing because of all the weird budget and stuff but it's painkiller he's awesome wish it would have gotten picked up number 16 the resurrection from season one episode one in terms of a pilot it's pretty damn good it starts off kind of like a different comic book origin story where our hero is already retired he wants to live a normal life he couldn't stop Tobias. Tobias thinks he killed Black Lightning, but he's all back now, so now he's in trouble by his higher ups. His daughters are still oblivious of what he's doing, and they're not as well as established yet because they're fresh and new characters. And we get a taste of Anissa's powers right at the end of her destroying the sink. He kept getting hurt and coming home bloody to Lynn and his family, so he needed to stop, which 
which is why he stopped but when his daughters are in trouble he has his inner battle of like should he or should he not but because of the 100 gain and lala and jen's boyfriend taking her to this party it's like yep yeah, well guess what like i have to go and come black lightning again that club scene though was still really cool and cool shot of him he tried to do the things the right way but he turns off all the light beats up everyone his power punchy lightning shooting lightning and then as the season goes on he gets more powers and more abilities first look at his super bright neon thing it didn't look good around the edges and everything but it still looked good in front and it's just cool seeing like beginnings of the show and how it didn't really change what well, it did change in terms of suits and everything but like the look and everything is still the same show has always been consistent and just good number 15 lawanda the book of hope from season one episode two lynn is still there you know talking and jefferson be like there should be no black lightning right and he's always like yeah there's no black lightning whatsoever you know clearly lying but he always goes again for help he did raise him after his father did get killed by tobias however things get harder because one of his students lawanda gets killed you've got lynn saying don't do it but then these bad things are happening because there is no black lightning there's no hero and freeland so it kind of forces him to be like you know what screw these things i will become black lightning at night a principal during the day and then on the flip that anissa her powers are starting to develop she starts going at this factory not factory like trash factory thing and starts kicking these laundry mats really hard whenever she breathes in protecting herself breathes out there's like this sonic boob thing so she's figuring out her powers as well not telling anyone at all and then she even stops like a robbery too save the life and stop someone from being killed being a hero just like her father and the show also sets up a clear hierarchy in terms of the villain so lala right he's the leader of his gang his boss is tobias and then his boss is lady eve and then lady eve's boss is the shadow board so there's a clear hierarchy and how things work in the villain world and if you don't follow it through you're just gonna get killed so lala had to kill his cousin because he wasn't listening and wasn't getting the whole world of being in a gang and working under orders because if his cousin goes starts causing problems then lala gets in trouble and then tobias gets in trouble so it's like a domino effect it's this keychain events and he had to kill his own cousin because he didn't get that and then jen is doing jen things actually completely forgot what she was doing to be honest with you i just forgot but as far as socializing at school with her friends completely oblivious to what's going on in the world of freeland and whatnot yeah i just forgot about that number 14 and then devil brought the play the book of green light from season one episode five black lightning learns how to fly due to gammy put it in the like hand things what's it called crap what the hell is it called anyways he can fly now so anytime he needs to lift off he can lift off now gammy and tobias they've got some history he goes over to his pawn shop and they had a deal of being like not to really meet with each other or interact with each other because there wouldn't be issues they would just bring up some old stuff about some things like bringing it up who is black lightning the identity does he know lies to him but they just kind of go out and then his sister tori gets the idea to just go back to his father's house because they want to break their back due to the fact that their father was abusive towards them and this is sweet revenge for their father just to kind of leave them there to just die with his back broken pretty messed up things but i don't know he was also a bad father as well so it's like this conflicting thing but i believe in tobias he's doing the right thing because he's a great villain and then in this in this episode kind of like detective in a way where she's digging up old files turns out that her grandfather alvin died one week after he was looking up these vaccines on getting kids powers of wanna and there was one of them and she goes to talk to this older gentleman who doesn't really want to talk about these things just gives her a box full of information on what happened 30 years ago but on the other hand is defending herself and she actually impresses both jeff and lynn befriending her parents just being like hey you know what let her off the hook but also being like hey did you get them pretty good again being a family and anissa sets up to get her own costume and make it which again looks pretty damn whack but you know it's a prototype number 13 equinox the book of fate from season 1 episode 7 with jeff lynn and gammy knowing about anissa's powers they find out that she can self-heal so anytime she gets hurt not like you know badly hurt but just like a scratch here and there she can self-heal and we also get to see more of gammy doing his dirty work we know he has his past but what can you do other than hacking and make suits or it turns out he can actually kill people in cold blood cover up his tracks and you know protect the pierce family he kills tobias's henchman toledo and he just does it he's like you know what just to protect everyone around him he just kills him straight up and then also seems like lynn is on board with this whole superhero heroism thing where she asks him to build and it's a suit not necessarily support her being a hero but you know just so that she can protect herself but in doing so also embraces her to go out and be more of a hero as well she's probably way more powerful than jeff not as experienced but her powers make her really strong and i almost forgot this episode has like three deaths as well one toledo two tobias's sister tori she gets shot while black lightning decides to attack tobias and lady e which tobias had planned to kill her because he doesn't like the way things are without anyone knowing so for him and cyanide and his sister and just right before tori died she already had planned with tobias to make black lightning look bad guy the rest are freeland and so that what happens where henderson calls jefferson i think he's like black lightning just killed on site and cops now think including henderson think that black lightning is going to rogue and killing people everywhere and then the end always come off to me as something weird even re-watching it where lala he's come back alive and then lady eva's tattoo on his like chest i think and he wakes back up raising from the dead and it's like still a bit confusing even now i'm like this is cool i know where this goes 
themselves, but it's definitely like, what's going on here? Number 12, Sins of a Father, The Book of Redemption from Season 1, Episode 10. 2-Bit is back. I think 2-Bit might be my favorite non-essential character of Black Lightning. Again, he's just that funny-ass character that Jefferson just goes, you know, to him every now and then. And the first couple of seasons, just being like, what up? What are you doing? Please stay safe and be good. And throughout these talks, and because of Black Lightning showing up, he actually becomes a good person. But anyway, he's in this episode because, I don't know, he's there to have like a funny bit because his name is 2-Bit. Jennifer's powers start manifesting and start kind of, not going out of control, but she's also like freaking out thinking she's more of a freak trying to talk to her parents and sister and friends but it's just not working because they don't know what to do but her powers are different from the others but also very similar to jefferson's where they don't know what to do with her and then digging deep into those vaccines 30 years ago turns out those kids are still alive in pods those pods again it felt like season one we felt like this long like overarching thing with the kids in a pod and so that's gonna be very much important throughout the whole series until the very last season lala is again somehow still hanging on seeing the ghost of lawanda and his cousin and just i don't know sitting there like i would honestly be creeped out if i was him started seeing the people that i killed talk to me i believe this is one club scene where people are just looking at him and he's like talking by himself but that's creepy kills one guy brutally as well once he comes back with like this new attitude while tobias is gone and then kind of like the big reveal and the big just kind of twist so gambi was a asa spotter looking for kids taking out kids with meta abilities and he couldn't really do it for jefferson however there's still one that is watching right now and it turns out to be the vice principal Kara. and even now it's kind of like wait a minute the vice principal who has eyes on jefferson who's eyeing him throughout this whole first season who's been doubting him to be like black lightning what and then the next episode loyalty is trusted taking a liking in jefferson because she sees him as an admirable guy and whatnot but like Kara, out of all the people Kara is it really this is a stage of like trust nobody freeland because that's what i would start doing just trust nobody in freeland anyone new who comes in town just don't trust them they're probably gonna betray you or something number 11 the resurrection and the light the book of pain so hold on what the guy's name martin there we go the guy martin he's like the main guy of this asa he's not like the main bad guy but he's the one doing the experiments and pods of these kids but he's like the main guy bossing tobias around keeping him and kind of healing him orders him but he doesn't like that but he's like the main overarching bad guy Kalu is able to walk now i think he's called painkiller yet in this season but i'm just calling him painkiller and he has that wig on which god damn i don't know why they think that was a good idea I honestly still like they should have just left his hair like I don't know why they added the whole wig hair on it just looks weird but you know his needles and his fighting skills isn't at the level of pink early yet at this point in the show he's still like a thug you know he's still that kid who wants to get out of freedom but he's stuck with Tobias now he can't walk now he's able to he owes everything and Tobias would have lied to him being that black lightning was a cause of his paralysis really when a lie as well so he's being manipulated and controlled without realizing it because he hated that feeling being in freedom but now he's kind of stuck in that once again but now further down the rabbit hole with being with Tobias. Both him and Tobias attack Garfield. Round two of Black Lightning and Tobias. Tobias gets the help of Painkiller. They both two on one him. While on the flip side, Thunder fights a Cyanite in a pretty damn good fight as well. And then Jen is, you know, still at home probably working on her powers because she's not really there. I think she is, right? He comes and helps him. Revives Jefferson in a way with their lightning abilities because he got shot with the needle. Khalil and Tobias have to retreat. And then they needed to explain why Lala was back. So they were just like, guess what? Tobias is the reason why Lala was revived while he's seeing dead people are the side effects of the revival and he is still in control of Lala and wants everything. He wants to take over the shadow board, freeland everything. He hates how he's treated like a lap dog and the higher up. He wants everything. I do feel that that was just kind of like a plot thread that I don't know. Again, this is me assuming stuff, but they needed to explain that. So it's like, oh crap. We'll just say Tobias did it, even though it wasn't even said up until now, because that'll fix the issue, which it does in a way. It does. You know what? It does. But I do wonder, was it planned or was it just like, yeah, we didn't say it was Tobias from the start, but we'll just say it is because we kind of have to tie it and have it make sense we're at the top 10 now so number 10 shadow of death the book of war so after the big fight with tobias and pingular jefferson now is depowered everyone including gambi lynn the whole family are at this cabin and the asa agents and police are now they're all involved going to this cabin thing they all have to like defend themselves jefferson starts seeing and talking to his father ghost and tells him that he needs to move on or not move on but power through this so that you can kill or defeat tobias and not let this patch and bad thing ever happen again and just kind of push forward and move on it's a good and emotional to see with his father who we rarely see because it's only within these like self-reflecting moments or he's close to dying once he wakes back up he's going out deep power but jennifer doesn't want none of that both lynn and gambit they find out that she generates lightning so because of her abilities alone she hugs jefferson and he is repowered again juiced him up in this first season plays as a supporting role in her powers but eventually it will evolve into the suit and everything both asa and i think the police department get messed up i may hold on do they i think just asa agents sent by mark 
Tobias. But they don't stop Tobias. Tobias is off on his own with this briefcase at the end saying that he could take over Freeland. While they go and start with this pot experiment. And once they get there, Gamby does the dirty work because none of the peers can't allow to have murder. So Gamby, being an unknown person, just, you know, kills Martin right in front of them. He is the unknown person. He is the wild card. Now they're just a bunch of odds for Lena to deal with. In the next two seasons, these experiments are not exposed to the media and the rest of the world in Freeland. While both Lightning, not Lightning, Thunder and Black Lightning are now known as public heroes to Freeland. They go on the street and be celebrated by it, have some handshakes or have some high fives or whatever. While Tobias and Sinai loom in the background, they're ready to take over Freeland from Black Lightning and get his revenge on him, killing Tori. He just blames him for the death of his sister. And I do like the fact that this first season ends with not killing the main villain. Like the main villain is Tobias, but he still lives on to live another day so that they can deal with them whenever they want to. as an experiment and pods are as well, but I like how they still kept him around and they didn't kill him off. Number nine, the book of consequences. Chapter one, rise of the green light babies. Now this title sequence will be the start of leave the whole comic book opening and start of the book of something the book of whatever right the book of blood the book of consequences the book of revelations all that stuff i'm assuming they went this way because it's just a lot more simpler and easier to just be like you know what instead of coming up with names put the book of because it is a comic book show it's flipping through the pages and being shown as a comic book because it is based off of the comic book character which just makes sense the whole opening comic thing in the book of it just became a staple in this series i would argue that this season opener is the best because it opens up with a shocking death of cyanide who i thought was stuck around with tobias until the very end but nope turns out Kara, who just comes back kills her with her heels and she dies and then in the end tobias shoots her with a goddamn harpoon and grabs her and fishes her like a goddamn fish and she's just jumping out of windows and so it opens up with that and it's like okay this season isn't messing around it seems like they're gonna up the stakes a little bit killing off everybody important to tobias so he can be more psychotic more crazy more unhinged the pierce family stays happy embraces their heroism lynn is dealing with odell immediately in this opener and he's already like who would have thought that he would become like a staple villain for this season and next season just lurking in the shadows he's just watching you anissa and jefferson have an argument on the system on whether it works or not anissa doesn't believe it doesn't work out at all she goes out in a black hoodie starts stealing money and giving it to the people of freeland while jefferson is very much old school and believes in the system it's worked for him before he has a house started a family but he does know that it is law he just doesn't want to break the laws and this on the other hand doesn't mind breaking a couple of laws here and there and then because jefferson was absent during the khalil and tobias invading of the high school they question his you know appearance where was he and so he basically has to resign because he doesn't want to tell you know tell the truth he has to basically be like okay tell us what it is he can't really do that identity so he has to resign he's made that decision and then with jen's power acting up they hire a psychic wait what's her name perenna or something like that and jen feels like treated like some sort of freak previous season and in this season she feels different she just wants to be normal again she's that character and girl that doesn't want these powers but because it is so extraordinary it's like well what do you do with that and you know she goes along with that journey in this season Number 8, The Book of Consequences, Chapter 2, Black Jesus Blues from Season 2, Episode 2. So this is where one of the couple of the pockets get out and one specifically, Wendy Hernandez, she gets out. She has these like wind elemental powers. She goes to the places that she knew 30 years before she was in a pod. But since things have changed in the past 30 years, she's going around wrecking things. Black like goes there to stop it, puts her back in the pod because she needs to be contained. She has no friends or family no more. So it's like, well, what do you do? Even if these kids get out of these pods, they have no one to run to. They might as well just be stuck in a pod because no one's really gonna take care of them and then Aza Williams is a kid that died but got green light inside of him so he wakes back up with this like lightning thing inside his neck and he's being rejected by his own mother no mother doesn't even want him anymore so it's like where does he go off the cops want to shoot him but they shouldn't shoot him and so he just goes running off until Gamby I think or Jeff finds him Jeff's like you know what we'll invite him to dinner so there's this hilarious dinner scene where his ability whenever he looks at people he makes tell the truth or just tell them how they actually feel their darkest like secrets or whatnot and then it's this very real awkward aggressive but hilarious dinner scene and everyone's like oh shit we should probably get this kid out jennifer talks to him for a while they both feel like they don't belong here both feel like freaks and so because this kid has nowhere left to go his mother does want him he feels rejected by love it's time for him to go back in the pod which is kind of sad well no one wants to go in a pod but when you have no family or friends left where do you go well might as well go back in the pod you have no one left jefferson also has an issue with an and being not you know really humble bowing down and having high fives and do your job be a hero and move on you don't need to interact with the community 
but she doesn't see it that way. Being a hero means you're protecting your city, your people, and interacting with them, man. And Jefferson just does not see that at all. And he finally resigns from being principal. And there's this really nice speech at the end. Kids love him. They all love him. He's a great principal. He has to say goodbye to them, like, fully. But being, like, the leader of school, he can't do that no more. He has to resign, saying goodbye as being the leader. But will still teach at the school in a very nice and wholesome speech. Number 7, The Book of the Apocalypse. Chapter 2, The Omega. So this season 2 finale is the start of the first fall of Tobias because there won't be multiple falls. But that teleporting meta really shown in this show because of budget and he will be way too OP. If you have a teleporting meta, teleporting and shit, he's gonna be OP. He should be able to take out lightning and thunder everyone around him as quickly as possible. It's like the flash issue where most of the time, like 90% of the time, if it's not another speedster, he should be able to take out a villain or a hero. But because TV budget and contracts and stretching out a show, it's just, it won't work. The only reason why we rarely saw this telemeta is because he'd be too OP. But he's really cool, tough to deal with. Cutter then leaves to buy. There's multiple scenes in a handful of episodes where he's talking to his sister through this painting. And, you know, she's with him. But she is kind of, like, consciously, like, worried about him. And kind of questions why she's even with him. But by the end, she's tired of him. Kind of leaves him. And we never, ever see this character again. And like I said earlier in this video, I do like this character. But I think she's her, her purpose and her role of fulfilling the duty to Tobias and the story. By leaving him in peace with his sister and being kind of like a catalyst to his first downfall. And then Lightning is still on her revenge kick. Buzzes through the window and Lightning his ass up over the kick Tobias' ass in this awesome scene. Tobias is taking down the ASA has him in his red light so he can DH his age. And so they're all celebrating. They're all defeated Tobias. Freeland is not, you know, completely Freeland. Not free of violence. But the head of the table Tobias is finally gone. But Odell comes in and just ruins the fun. And says that he knows every one of their identities. And saying that war is coming because of the Markovians. Dr. Jace was taken by the teleporting meta. And he needs soldiers like Jefferson, Thunder, and Lightning for this war. Upcoming war. And he doesn't even tell they have Khalil will be known as Painkiller in the next season. And he's going to ease the pain of some people and kill it. Number 6, The Book of Occupation Chapter 2, Miriam Tazbin, Tazin, Tazin, something like that, Tazbin or Tazbin, either way, from Season 3, Episode 2, there's a lot of covering up in this episode, Jin basically has to cover for Anissa because Odell thinks that Blackbird is the same as Anissa, he goes over to Anissa's apartment and Jin is over there relaxing and whatnot and she has a cover for her, and this won't be the only time Grace has to cover for her as well, but you know, Jin's doing a good job just kind of covering for her, being like, she's out doing grocery shopping or whatever, you know, doing her thing, and it's also the realization that the the ASA are not only so-called protecting us, but they are literally surveillance and watching us 24-7. And I don't think that's a world that, you know, no character in this freeland really likes. They want their freedom, and this isn't freedom at all to them. They're just being watched over. Henderson has a hand on between them because something doesn't feel right about them, as he feels, and it will later on progress into the ASA taking over the police station. Lala's doing his own thing, you know, the 100 gang, while also doing the same thing. ASA training or creating metas so they can fight against Markovia, but they're having metas fight each other so they can train each other none of these kids really want to do this i suffer painkiller of course because you know painkiller but like none of these kids really want to do it their powers are also limited and also see them hurting when lynn is testing it on them as well like, and speaking of making people doing dirty work odell orders painkiller to kill his own mother and he just grabs her neck and damn snaps it or something like that killed his own mother not being able to be free from tobias the city and now odell Number 5, The Book of Markovia, Chapter 4, Grab the Strap, from Season 3, Episode 13. So this is technically like the first episode of like the big group up where Painkiller joins in Pierce family. So that includes Jefferson, Anissa, Lightning, Painkiller, I think TC? I think? Probably TC, that one girl whose name I forgot about, Grace, like everyone is involved. It's like the first batch of grouping up and the introduction of Gravedigger where he just takes over, reads the mind of Dr. Jace and Lynn. It's already a character that keeps you intrigued. Lynn and her experiments lead her to creating like these meta booster so she has powers now he uses powers to her advantage kind of get out and have a leeway into helping our hero save them and see Lynn get out as well they also have to save Tobias because he is integral to creating meta boosters because his bones or what was that called bone marrow there we go bone marrow is integral to the ingredient and in creating meta boosters I believe Jefferson meets him is like I know your identity shut up man knocks him out because he's annoying but then he either gets taken away by Markovia's or he's like swimming drifting away and he's all fine by the time it's a finale Brandon finally gets to confront Dr. Chase first thing he does is attacks her but they gotta stop that because they need her and Len to be integral to whatever is going on and the experiments and ingredients and kids in the pods and then you also have a cool painkiller and gravedigger fight as well having them stand off it would have been pretty damn cool if it was painkiller and gravedigger and not Khalil but it's still a really decent fight just seeing the confidence that gravedigger has he appreciates how good painkiller is but he has more experience which means he's gonna win this fight he's just so confident and so everyone gets their you know personal issues with each character but by the end 
they all have to come together at this escape plane. Gravedigger's there. He's all looking like you're not gonna escape. He needs his doctors. Black Lightning comes in, beats him up a little bit, and then they escape. Not without realizing that Lin left their meta boosters. He injects himself with it, getting more powerful. He will take his army into Freeland, take over Freeland as well. Motors are valid because he's been tested on so much by the US and everything that he has to take it over and not have it take over by corrupt people even though he himself is corrupt in a way. Number 4. The Book of Occupation Chapter 5. Requiem for Tavon from Season 3 Episode 5. This is a big episode for kind of everyone. Tobias knows the identity of the Pierce family. Since he's been sitting in the cell for so long and seeing Black Lanny taunt him, he's been, you know, why he's been saving the Pierce daughters for like two times in a row or something like that and he just put two and two together and it's not hard because, you know, those goggles and protecting his identity but he figured it out. It came out of nowhere but it was like, you know what? This is good for his character. He's smart. He'll know what to do right after he gets out. Kind of eyes and be like, shut up. He'll figure a way out of all this and he does by the end of it. There's a guy named Tavon who is a live streamer, I think. He's just a sweet, wholesome kid and Painkiller was ordered to kill him. He poisoned him and he dies in the end and this kind of pushes, you know, all of Freeland to be like, you know what? We need to set up a resistance. So Henderson's kind of the start of it, getting the church guy, getting whatever involved, getting everyone out of Freeland so they can attack from within or, or not within but like basically you know come back around and attack or just resist because they are the resistance and Brandon is revealed to have powers as Jane goes and follows him and Lynn just so happens to be working with her so it is a big moment for the characters of Freeland to change because the ASA are not helping it seems like they are not aiding Freeland at all painkiller this unknown just came and killed one of their people poisoning them and they need to take charge and take a stand so it motivates all of Freeland to get back on top while doing things on the side secretly pushing away the ASA or oh, yeah, and painkiller was ordered to kill well hold on take that back he was not ordered to kill Tavon he was ordered to kill Blackbird and touch Tavon so Tavon dies from it I just reread my notes and uh I read that wrong so whatever I just said earlier just forget I even said that but yeah again painkiller is a killing machine anytime he's on screen from when he's painkiller until the series finale he's great Number 3, The Book of Resistance, Chapter 4, Earth Crisis. This is the episode that connected Black Lightning Universe to the Arrowverse. So it seems like before Crisis, in its own universe, because of Crisis and the Red Skies, like once it got to the Red Skies, I was like, yes, I'm gonna love this episode. And then we get different iterations of Jen, spelled Jen differently, Earth 1, 2, or whatever. How each didn't treat her family wanna, how she killed one, and how she didn't, and how ignored everything. Like all of it was great. One Jen decides that, you know what, rebel against her family and kills them because Odell has her under his wing. She has been fully corrupted, wearing all black and whatnot, talks differently as well, and so she decides to kill her family one by one and feels no regrets or no remorse whatsoever, not realizing that she's probably gonna feel a bit lonely. She doesn't have no family right after this. Our gen, our like Earth Prime gen, from her perspective, gets a different perspective from two different gen. One that doesn't and then the other, I'll be honest, the other one I is forgettable, but I believe the other one is one that's like in love with Khalil and follows the orders. She's the one that stays home, which is an issue on Earth her earth i'll be honest i forgot about that one she gets two completely different perspectives and finds a middle ground in it different gen how they live her life and it's just cool seeing that i don't remember is that the majority of this episode i think it is it's at least half of it because the other half is jen all asleep while her conscience is like reaching out red skies and while the whole family's worried about jen and so that's what gambi lynn anissa and jefferson are doing but for within her whole mind talking to other versions of themselves fighting and not fighting about arguing on how to live their life jen actually learns from this you know constantly having an argument with them because either her into this version or that version of Jin, she doesn't really seem to enjoy being those versions of them. And then the Red Skies take over, everyone dies, Jefferson disappears because Wells takes him, Pariah takes him, and it shows the to be continued go over to crisis on even Earths. He shows up in part three during the Flash episode. We can interact with Superman and Flash. It's also cool. Number 2, The Book of War, Chapter 3, Liberation, from Season 3, Episode 16. The Season 3 finale to me is the best season finale of the show, mainly it's the second version of Everyone Is Here. Just get everybody involved, Grace, Anissa, Jennifer, Painkiller, Jeff, Lynn, Brandon, that one girl that TC has a crush on, TC, Gamby. But just have everyone be involved and against the ASA, even Henderson. And Henderson himself, making the ultimate sacrifice while he's in battle, gets himself killed. This will have a long lasting effect on Jefferson, where he won't wear the suit for like five episodes straight so his death doesn't feel like it was all for nothing even lala helped after saying that he's not interested freeland is his street it is his home lynn decides to embrace the meta boosters even though stating that she wasn't previously addicted to she's still addicted to green light and these meta things gets involved and feels important painkiller or killer is able to get to odell and get his revenge by shooting him not killing him but just having his revenge go to court confessing exposing the experiments the asa has done to the court to the media to the whole world both gabby and tc they get like a cool sequence of killing major 
Major Gray and all the ASA agents within his own pawn shop. Digger is still looming in the background as he watches, but that won't come to fruition because of the rush season that was the final and fourth season. And the whole family does a walk off. Lynn playing an important part of the experiments and testing on herself, having way more important things to do in the season. Anissa leading the team of resistance, having this different persona of Blackbird is also very good and also very successful. Jin finally standing her ground and, you know, learning some things. There's still a lot of learning things to do with the sisters. And Jefferson not really learning about well, okay, hold on. That's not true. I guess doing the same old same old. Like, he's the experienced meta, so it's like, what else can he learn? Aside from losing loved ones like Henderson, having that new slick suit, learning to work with, you know, some bad people here and there like Tobias and Lala, even though they're not on the same terms, they need to work together in order to free Freeland from the ASA from watching over them. Each of them walking together at the end to end season three, each of them having a purpose to walk out and feeling proud of themselves by the end of the season was a good call and a good last shot to end. And number one, to me, the best and my favorite episode episode of Black Lightning ever is Book of Markovia Chapter 3 Motherless ID. This episode is not really a painkiller centric episode but it is the episode where Khalil wakes up and within his own mind and realizes all the bad things that he's done and having to go through that guilt because painkiller is my favorite character. He is the best character having this beast within him and having to control it any moment or any second it will come out and take over his whole body is a really cool idea and something scary that he has to overcome and not be able to be with Jennifer because of this because of the code that was embedded by Odell and the ASA to kill the Pierce family. So anytime he's anywhere near them at any point in time or any moment, it can go off. Kind of like a lapdog. As much as Skiller wants to say that he's not a lapdog, kind of is. He is programmed just to kind of be a badass assassin and warrior and learn every jujitsu and all kendo, all that stuff. And then everything else surrounding the episode was good as well. Lynn not trusting Dr. Jace because both now at the Markovians like home base, they have to be careful what they say and what they do. But Jace is obviously playing dirty because she's a little rat. She's a goddamn snake going around playing all or both or each side even though they have the saver in the next episode and everyone else getting involved again black lightning having to work with major gray to get the two doctors back and prep for that next episode of the first big group thing was great as well and then adding on the whole firewall tc's help jen going in there and helping him and the scene like the projectors of how he killed his mother and all the bad things that he's done is a burden to khalil and so it's good it's a great emotional thing for khalil and painkiller progresses the story with everyone grouping up and dr jace being dr jace lynn's addiction even more with their crazy eyes. It's probably not the best season 3 finale or like the Earth Crisis episode better, but it's just got that painkiller emotional weight quick little section here i'm gonna rank the seasons this is gonna be really quick so the worst again worst season is still a good season four is season four this isn't so i get it if you don't like this season it definitely has issues with being rushed because there are probably things planned out covid had an issue behind the scenes things had an issue so it feels rushed things were like wait a minute why was this like that and why wasn't this developed they didn't have any time actor wasn't available and it ended on a good note with Lala getting a last laugh it was a good season finale but as a serious finale it didn't feel like a finality at all to me it is still a good season of comic book television Number three will be season two. Season two doesn't have many issues. My only issues with season two is the fact that episode five through ten-ish, that middle chunk, is a bit boring. Like the Book of Blood arc with Looker is fine. It feels too detached from what's actually going on in Freeland because they're in South Freeland. I think that was done on purpose, but it just feels disconnected to a point where it's like, is this even kind of the same show? It's got our characters in it, but I didn't really vibe with it upon rewatching. I thought I would like, you know what? I would like it more on rewatch. I didn't. It's fine. It's okay. It's still good. And then secondly, the Runaway arc with Killer. Lou and Jennifer is a big waste of time. At the end of it, they're tired of running. So it's like, why even run away in the first place when you know you were gonna go? But the payoff, if I'm being ripped, was awesome. So it was kind of worth it, but it was a bit of a slog. Number two would be season one. This season is probably the almost perfect season. It starts off as an unconventional origin superhero kind of show where our hero is retired. He gets his abilities as episodes goes on. Both of his daughters learn of their powers. His wife or ex-wife doesn't really like the fact that he's a hero, but learns to embrace it by the end. Gets his friend Gamma to help proves about him, but by the end forgives him because they consider him family now. Tobias is a great villain. Toledo and Sinai are good. Khalil is a compelling good character. That wig though this season the last season was whack but hey it is what it is. The costumes look good. Good humble beginnings. And then number one is season three. Probably not as perfect as season one but I just prefer it. Brandon, Gravedigger, Painkiller, Crisis, the new suit. Lynn has a lot more to do in this season than any other season. Like she's been so useful to a point where it's like they should have just kept her addiction. Probably couldn't do that. Odell just being Odell being shady as heck 
ASA, the whole town of Freeland, Lala and Henderson being on the hero side and helping in unconventional ways was really damn good. The death of Henderson effect on Jefferson having his emotional weight to it. So to me, it is my favorite. That is the end of the video. I've ranked all 58 episodes and the seasons. So this is the first time that I'm doing this and I don't know how well this is gonna go. In terms of the editing, this is gonna take a long ass time. It takes so long, Jesus Christ. But it was fun filming. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. This did take a while to, you know, put together, but hopefully you guys liked it. You guys like my rankings. It is obviously subjective. It won't be the same thing as yours. So I don't want to see anybody in the comments yelling or complaining about me being wrong because there's no right or wrong answer here. It's subjective. All of it is. So yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Black Lightning is the most consistent show and the best show of the Arrowverse. So that's it for me. This has been The Road So Far and thank you for watching.